G'day and welcome back to the Homestyle Gourmet Butcher's YouTube channel. My name's Jared and today we're going to be running through how to cut T-bone. Okay, so whether or not it's come out of a cryback bag or it's been hung in the fridge like this one here, it's all going to be the same. Essentially, you're just going to have to trim off any of this fat underneath here, get rid of any sinew on the top, and then you'll be ready to go. So, more or less, what we want to do here is remove any of this fat and sinew that runs right along the top of the chine bone or the spine, and then take a bit of the fat and sinew out that runs around the eye fillet. So just slowly removing that fat and sinew, just being careful not to touch that eye fillet again. So now that we've cleared the top up, we want to take that kidney fat out. And there are seams keeping that kidney fat on there, so if you can sort of get your fingers in underneath one of those seams, it'll make it a whole lot easier to remove that kidney fat. And by removing the majority of that thicker, creamier kidney fat, it'll make the meat a whole lot more pliable and then a lot easier to remove the rest of the fat after this step. So now that that's removed, I find that the easiest way to remove that next stage through the next seam would be to just push down with your thumb like that and sort of try and push the fat off rather than sort of cutting it off. And then you'll be able to go back again and once again find the next seam, which will take it right back to the actual eye fillet. Now depending on what the situation is, what shop you're in or what your personal likings are, you can, once you've removed this top seam and fat off the eye fillet, you can go as far as denudering the eye fillet if you wish to. So now I'm just going to give it one last check over and just get rid of any fat that I have missed and go back over and that's where I'll do the denudering of the eye fillet as well. But as mentioned, denudering is not necessary, that's completely up to the individual. So now just going to shorten up this tail and square it off to make sure it's nice and even. Now this is a personal preference on how long you leave your tail. Some people do like a long, long tail left on their actual T-bone. I like to leave it roughly half an inch to an inch. So these off cuts will just be getting trimmed up for mince and for sausage trim. Now if you're doing this at home or in your shed, you can just throw that in towards either snags or dog food. So moving on to slicing here, now depending on how square it's been taken off when the argue is broken will depend on whether or not you're going to take a face cut or not. So all I have to do is take a slight face cut so that the bandsaw can just square up and cut the end of the bone. That way when I lay the T-bone down on a tray or on a pan it will sit evenly and cook evenly as well. Now as for slicing you just have eye fillet down, that way it will stay nice and stable and it's completely up to the individual if they slice left to right or right to left. So this is where I just nicked off that bone just to square it up so the steak will actually sit flat. Now as for cutting your T-bone through the actual saw itself, make sure that it's sitting nice and flat and stable and as you push it through you'll pull your hands apart so if you do slip your hands are going to move away from the saw and not towards the blade. And just always remove a mesh glove if you do use one and if you've got a long sleeve make sure they're pulled up that way you have no catch hazards, nothing that's going to drag your hand in and give you any serious injury. If the whole T-bone wasn't needed, you can put a hook through it and hang it away for a later date. This one here, I don't need all of it in the window, so I will be hanging this away for the following day. So now we move on to trimming and displaying. Now I like to just scrape off that bone dust with the end of my knife on both sides of the steak. That way you just get a bit better shelf life and if a customer does get it home, they don't have bone dust on one of the sides and not on the other. It just sort of makes for better consistency on your product at the same time.
Right, so now that we've scraped all the bone dust off all of the stakes itself, we can move on to trimming the fat around the outside. Now this will also be a personal preference or dependent on what shop you work in. Now we like to just trim the fat down so it's nice and even. Customers do buy with their eyes and we find we will get better sales if it looks nice and neat and has less fat coverage around the outside. But this will depend from shop to shop and individual likings. Now we do quite often get custom requests where people will want the T-bone either cut extra thick or extra thin and then the same goes for fat, they either want it completely removed or left on completely. That's just one of the benefits of hitting up your local butcher. If you do need anything specific, you can ask and they'll be able to do it for you. Now as for displaying the T-bone, they do have a good and a bad face. The upside about T-bone is both faces do generally look good, so you can manipulate it to make it look better on your tray. The eye fillet obviously tapers away as it gets smaller, so that side there will be face down so that the eye fillet has its biggest face on the up. Now as you're trimming them, if you notice that the T-bone itself has a bit thicker bone down the bottom there on the chine bone, you can put that through the bandsaw now and just trim it off to make it look neater. So I'll be displaying them on this white tray here, so I will be going left, right, left, right, rather than having them all sit the one way and tearing down the same side. Thanks for watching, hopefully you got a bit out of this and you can either put it in practice in your own shop or even at home if you're doing your own home butchering. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.